We have an open border. People are drowning at sea. I have a question for the government, for the political class, and for the media. Do you want to solve the migrant crisis? If so, you need to face 10 truths. Truth one, we have an open border. Why? Because last year, over 28,000 people arrived on the south coast, uninvited, unvetted, and unchecked. The government evidently has no control over who enters the country. That's under the control of criminal gangs and people smugglers. Having a secure border used to be one of the basics of nationhood. Our government has forgotten this. It's most certainly a crisis, and it's a crisis for two reasons. One, because of the speed with which it has grown. The numbers have grow, grown. Mm -hmm. They've gone from under 2,000 in 2019 mm -hmm. to 28,401 last year. That's a huge increase. It is out of control. For that reason alone, I think it's, it's a serious problem. But apart from that, there are huge numbers waiting to come, mm. willing to take the chance of crossing mm. the channel and prepared to pay a lot of money for it, which is why the crooks, mm. the criminal gangs, mm. are really who are making hand over fist, money hand over fist, are prepared to push it and drive it. Mm. Truth two. The migrants are acting rationally. If you can get here, you're almost certain to stay, and you win a valuable prize. You get access to Britain's social wage, which entitles you to housing, health, and other benefits, and you have good prospects of eventual paid employment. You enter a peaceful society with a history of embedded rights, like freedom of religion or freedom of speech and association a place where property rights exist, along with laws and contracts to enforce them. You're not obliged to routinely bribe public officials or to pay protection rackets. Anyone living in a war zone or in a corrupt, poverty-stricken state is acting sensibly and considering migration. And if you can just walk in, why wouldn't you try? But remember, we can have open borders or we can have a welfare state. We can't have both. Truth three, France is a safe country. The Channel migrants are coming from France and the idea that France, the land of Diderot, Camus and Jacques Tati, is unsafe is totally absurd. France is a fine country, at times an enemy of England, but a fine civilization. There can be no justifiable asylum seeker from France. People crossing from France are engaging in asylum shopping. And importantly, most arrivals are fit young men. There are women and children in UN refugee camps close to war zones in far greater need. Truth four, blaming the French is a ploy to distract the public. Who is responsible for our border? Anyone listening to Pretty Patel would think it's the French Republic. In fact, it's our responsibility. The French move migrants on because it's in their interest to do so. The flow will never be stemmed from France. The British national interest is to secure our own border, which is exactly what we're failing to do. Truth five, the flow will grow until the offer is changed. Word gets around is one of the most powerful forces in human affairs. Every successful illegal arrival makes further arrivals more likely. Family and friends get to know of the success and a trickle becomes a flood. And yet, the incentive to migrate illegally seems to pass over those who govern us. Instead, our governing elite has steadfastly maintained the rewards of doing so. Put simply, until the incentives change, stemming the flow will be impossible. Truth six, open borders breach the principle of social democracy. Some liberals think that national borders are oppressive 
and discriminatory. They want a world without borders, but most people want secure borders. This is a democratic issue. Who gets to decide? Powerful elites? International lawyers? Illegal gangs? In a democracy, the people must have their say. Has anyone ever asked the British people whether they want this to happen? I mean, it's all very well for economists to sort of come up with theories as to what is going to happen to the economy if all these millions of people come in. That's one thing. But if we're talking about a country which is a great deal more, about a great deal more than just the economy and money, it's what people want, it's what they believe in, it's what they have been brought up to be a part of. And that is what's being attacked. If a nation state is so fettered by international protocols that it can't protect its own borders, can't protect its own interests, then it's not being run on a democratic basis. Truth seven, because of population growth and economic failure in the global south, the pressures of illegal migration will grow. Migrants wish to live in the democratic west because it's more prosperous, more peaceful, and enjoys more liberty. Many arrivals from the Middle East and Afghanistan are fleeing war zones, and people from Sub-Saharan Africa seek better economic prospects. Africa is witnessing a colossal population explosion, but endemic corruption, poor management, and political incompetence mean that economic success has not occurred. And there is no good reason to think the outlook will change which means the impetus to migrate will continue to increase. Truth eight, foreign aid won't stop the flow. Keir Starmer thinks we can reduce migrant flows by donating more foreign aid. To anyone with experience of the world, this is quite ridiculous. The causes of warfare, global poverty and corruption are complex and often intractable. The idea that it's within our power to solve such issues on other people's behalf, to the extent that it would stem the incentive to migrate, is risible. The progressives promoting these ideas forget that such interventions have been tried to destruction. Afghanistan, after receiving aid on a truly fantastic scale, has sunk back into a state of poverty, conflict and chaos. Progressives may dream it, but foreign aid will not stop the flow. Truth nine, the post-war protocols on asylum are outdated and not fit for purpose. The overriding reason why the UK government can't deal with illegal migration is that it is bound by a series of post-war international agreements, such as the 1951 Refugee Convention and the 1953 European Convention on Human Rights. Written in the shadow of the Holocaust, these instruments gave the right to claim political asylum to anyone with a well-founded fear of being persecuted for reasons of race, religion, nationality, or membership of a social group. Any Afghan woman might reasonably qualify, so half the Afghan population, as might any Chinese citizen in favor of democracy, as well as any homosexual in countless states throughout the world. Put simply, billions of people would probably qualify for asylum in the UK if you could get them here. This is not sustainable, and it is not what the post-war conventions envisaged. They were in the aftermath of the Second World War and were primarily designed to uh, provide refuge for uh, communists, Eastern Europeans from the old Soviet empire. Mm. So yes, uh, you, you need some more appropriate if we're going to, uh, and, and we should, of course, provide refuge for those who need it. We always have, mm. and we always shall. Mm. The problem is that it's now being used as a device mm. for migration. Truth 10. Our leaders don't want to solve the crisis. Any democratic government can secure its borders. Just look at what the Polish did last year, but it has to want to do so. Our government 
has an 80-seat majority. It promised secure borders in the 2019 general election. There's certainly uh, no, um, no great desire to control immigration. We know that the Prime Minister, from his days when he was Mayor of London, that he's not exactly open borders, but he is someone who believes in uh, mass immigration. Yeah. He thinks it's a good thing. Let them all come. If it can't secure our border now, it never will. As Australia's post-Tampa experience shows, the flow, the illegal flow, would stop overnight. Borders are essential for peace, order and security. Like a city wall, they protect us and we need to take them seriously because ultimately our welfare state, our democracy and our way of life are at stake. Don't let them tell you there's nothing can be done about the migrant crisis. Most people want secure borders and we can have them, but we must elect people that believe in them.